everyone. Welcome to the Speakin podcast. I'm Ananya from Speakin, Asia's largest digital learning platform for, for professional growth through one-on-one -on -one coaching and group learning sessions. In today's ep episode, we have a distinguished leader from Philippines who will share their personal corporate journey, insights on leadership, and much more. Our guest today is Neil Kaimal. Neil brings over 15 years of experience in HR management, strategy, and development. His experience spans general HR practice, learning and training, organizational development, HR business partnership, employee relations, and compensations and benefits across the Philippines, India, and the Asia-Pacific region. Under his leadership, his previous company earned recognition as Asia's top employer brand for five consecutive years. He also served as a judge for the Concentric Asia Best Employer Award 2019, with academic units completed in IT and degrees in management, philosophy, and human resources. He combines strategic HR leadership with strong technical skills in HRIS and e-learning systems. Welcome to the Speaking Podcast, Mr. Neil. It's a pleasure having you here today with us. Hello, Hello everyone. How are you doing? Moving forward, what are some of the most important lessons you've learned in your career and how do you continue to grow and evolve as a leader? Well, the, the way I look at my HR journeys may be kind of different. I, I mark my journeys in terms of learning. And hence, I'd like to go through my HR journey by highlighting some of the most important uh, learnings I've had. Um, being the kind of person I am, I would usually take a step back and reflect on life a lot. You know, I'm that kind of person. Unfortunately, yeah, I've been blessed with realizations that have guided me along my HR career's journey. The first, I think, life lessons, life lesson I have in HR is that it's about promotion. You know, promotion, getting promoted is always something that everyone aspires for and it's celebrated, especially in this part of the world. When somebody gets promoted, you know, it's a big celebration for the entire team, for the, oh, maybe even for the entire company, right? Depends on the level. But uh, one thing I realized about promotion is that skills, character, the mindset, you know, has to shift every step of the way and every step or movement in one's career. What do I mean by that? We do not promote just because work was done well or work was done great. You know, promotion shouldn't be recognition. We promote because we see the totality of the entire person as being ready for the new role. So we don't just need to prepare the person in terms of skills, we need to make sure that we align the person to the company, the culture, you know, it's the whole package and not just a skill. And that's something I learned early on in my professional uh, career when I was just starting in HR. Second life lesson I have, you know, I, I got this when I was already starting to manage other leaders in a company. And uh, what is this lesson? that each person in the company will have his or her own desire, her own set of aspirations and different ways to reach those. Now, unfortunately, this gave birth to politics, you know, each one with his or her own agenda to accomplish, just to make sure that the desires, the aspirations are, are met. Now, the big challenge for everyone and for me back then was, how do I learn to navigate my way around all these power plays happening around me. You know, it's, it's different because everyone would have its, his own desire and aspirations. Everyone's trying to, to do best in, for, for himself. And so, you know, I started asking myself a different question. And maybe as HR practitioner, we should be asking ourselves a different set of questions as well. And that question back then was, well, for me, how do I help reshape the culture such that everyone aspire for a higher purpose and not just to serve their own desires and their own aspirations? Should, how should I, or how can I do something to make sure everyone realizes that they should be serving the greater good of the company and not just themselves? Or better yet, how can everyone realize in whatever they do in our company that whatever they do, they should be doing in the service of God that they believe in. 
you know, those kind of things. And then the, the third learning that marks my, my, my journey is, you know, just a play, you know, me getting at this point in my career, you know, I'm, I'm not exactly at the starting point already. So I'm, I'm trying to envision how do I make sure that the people around me learn something from me, you know, my, my legacy. So, and the, the learning is that it is great to be serving a higher purpose, right? somewhat connected to the second one. Uh, but I must remember that I'm in an institution that seeks to survive, to grow, to earn profit, to accomplish something bigger, do greater things. Now, everything we do in the company, I should be asking myself, how can my activity, my initiatives, or whatever I do, impact the bottom line? I'm not saying it's the end all, be all, you know, serve the profits of the company. I'm just saying it is something that should be considered all the time. So if we look at the evolution of the, the company buzzwords over the years, you know, uh, some time back, uh, we would be talking about employee satisfaction, corporate social responsibility, sustainability. And back then, there was a time that these words were being frowned upon as being super pro-employee and not and too much of an expense to the company. But now, you know, the world has shifted. We all understand that these things, employee satisfaction, corporate social responsibility, sustainability, and everything else, they actually impact the bottom line. And they serve a purpose higher than that of just simply the company earning profits. And so the two tie up. It's great to be serving a higher purpose, but we need to focus on the practical things, the bottom line of the company. And in the end, I hope we all find a way, the way I did, that these two can marry. And so to answer the second part of the question, how do I evolve as a leader? How do I continue evolving? I try never to stop learning. You know, as much as I can, I always continue to try to learn. I do not believe that there's a point in life when one can say, I've learned it all. I don't think that will ever come. I must be open to new learnings or else, you know, I think my career stops there. <laughs> and then I need to continue to take on new challenges. I believe, you know, at every point in time and uh, with a certain kind of regularity, we should get out of our area of comfort because that's the only way we grow. You know, challenge myself to get out of that safety zone and then grow. And then finally, I think we must continue to dream. It is often said that idealisms and visions die as you grow old. Um, I, I don't subscribe to, to, to that philosophy. And so I try to stay young all the time. And I do that by always embracing new dreams. Truly very inspiring. So it's been amazing listening to your journey and um, the valuable lessons that you've shared with us today. Um, definitely very important to keep on learning. Uh, moving forward with that, what, what core principles guide your leadership philosophy and how do you inspire your team to achieve excellence? Uh, that's a great one because, you know, just, just earlier today, somebody came up to me and thanked me for inspiring him for being the great leader that he is now. He, he just got recognized. You know, what, what I always do, all these learnings, whenever I reflect, I try to let others understand those also, you know, whenever the right time comes. And so along the way, there are some, you know, very basic I think, principles that I try to share to other leaders wherever I go. Number one, my favorite. Um, trust that everyone aspires to be the best they can be until proven otherwise. I think that's something difficult and it's not easy really because there are some people who whose standpoint is the opposite. Like they go to a place, they distrust everyone until they prove themselves trustworthy. I take the, the, the opposite stance, maybe as influenced by Stephen Covey in his book, Speed of Trust. I believe in the best of people. And then that kind of belief, I think, helps shape great performance. 
And that's important for an HR person. It helps build good relationships. And I believe it impacts overall productivity. And taking the opposite stance creates the opposite effect. You know, if you distrust people, they don't perform. They don't want to be engaged with you in any manner, in any way. Then in terms of productivity, they'll make do with mediocre performance. You know, whatever is passing, whatever is average, just to meet your minimum expectation. But I think with a kind of trust and good relationship, we do away with toxic workplace and we create an, an excellent workplace in the process. Second uh, principle I aspire to. I'm not the kind of leader who can be placed in a box. Not, you know, Neil is this kind of leader or that. I try to be the kind of leader my people need at any point in time which means it might vary per person, per situation, per instance. You know? Sometimes you need to practice leadership differently for even the same person, right? Because the situation of that person that, that that person is in, in a particular instance, requires you to approach leading him differently. What if you're a good leader, the good leader in your team, for example, who would naturally just you know, lead himself towards achieving something is in a situation where he has great family problems affecting his performance, then you need to lead differently. So different leadership style per situation, per person, per instance. But the third um, principle and connected to the second one, which I think for me is the most ideal kind of leadership, I try to set the vision you know, I, I show the people where I want to go, where I want to bring the team. And then I walk behind my team as they go there. Take note, it's behind. I'm not in front of them, like pulling them. I'm not even beside them or walking with them. I let them lead themselves. I just become their greatest supporter. You know, I think leadership is everybody's responsibility. I give all others the liberty, the chance to lead themselves, to prove themselves, because they've trusted. That's my starting point. But I'm there at any point in time, they need help. I'm their biggest rah-rah boy behind them. And that's how I make sure, you know, teams excel. And that's how I think all the teams under me excel in the past and the current team I have. Very inspiring, so. Can you share a quote or mantra that inspires you and keeps you motivated? Um, I have a couple. Both came from school and my apologies, both very religious. I came from a Catholic un university. <laughs> the first is from St. Ignatius of Loyola. Uh, it's known to my school simply as AMDG. It's a Latin phrase, ad maiorem dei gloria, which stands for everything for the greater glory of God. So that's a mantra. That's an inspiration that keeps me motivated every day. Everything I do, it's for the greater glory of God. So why would I do, why would I settle for something mediocre? Why would I settle for something, something that's just, you know, off passing mark? I do the greatest I can because I know in everything I do, I try to serve God. And how do I connect that with HR? I borrow from another saint of the Catholic Church, Saint Irenaeus, a theologian from the second century. And he says, the glory of God is man fully alive. The glory of God is man fully alive. I try to give glory to God by making sure that the people around me realize their full potential as human beings. And that's how I practice my career as HR. Lastly, sir, how do you see the role of HR evolving in the next five years, especially in the context of technological advancements and remote work? Oh, another great topic to, to discuss. I believe HR, H, HR as a department and HR practitioners role will continue to change and it is ever changing. There's lots of things happening nowadays. I'm sure you're very familiar, for example, with the with the gig culture, you know, a lot of people are not working full time anymore, but rather they work in gigs, they freelance or they, they do part time work. It's 
task-based engagement. Okay? That, that's how people would want to work for in a company. They engage with them just with this task and then that's it. They don't stay long. Imagine the kind of HR needed to deal with that kind of relationship with, with workers, with employees. Right? Second big thing happening, which I think impacts HR a lot, AI. I'm sure we're all tired of hearing those two letters by now, right? But we can't do anything about it. AI will change the landscape. People get empowered with more information, tasks getting more automated. Computers, because of AI, are now able to generate new info, new image, new ideas. And with that, I really strongly believe there will, there will be a change in the way we do work, a change in the way we manage people. So this is a thing that needs further study. It, it is being studied now. It is being discussed in lots of HR circles. It is happening, but how? It will change, definitely, the way we do HR, the way we practice HR. And then thirdly, because of the second one also, it gives birth to more, more powerful robots. So the impact of robotics in work. There will be less and less people in the workforce. Just the other day, Elon Musk said, we might be needing less and less people in the workplace. Right? I'm quite convinced that's going to happen sooner or later. Uh, and, and in that case, would HR practitioners agree that there will be less need for HR, for human resource management? Because companies will just be employing robots, right? But so as not to be outdated, what will HR need to evolve to? How should HR practitioners adapt in terms of skills, work approach, knowledge, and strategy? You know, all these things going on, and I'm just barely scratching the surface here. These are just the major changes happening nowadays, right? But all these things will definitely impact HR. We are in the midst of a huge change, and there has to be continued conversations, you know, happening, going on, to make sure that we remain relevant as HR practitioners. Otherwise, we just become one of the, those updated, outdated technologies. <laughs> Really interesting to see what the future holds for us. And it's going to be very unique and different. And let's see what technology advancements take place in the near future. Really inspiring, sir. Um, I would like to thank you so much for sharing your valuable insights and experiences with us today. It was a pleasure having you on the Speak In podcast. To our listeners, thank you for tuning in. Stay connected with us for more inspiring conversations with Asia's top leaders. Don't forget to subscribe and follow us on our social media platforms. Thank you.